Hello everybody, Fuzzfinger here and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. This is for the classic Final Fantasy VII, first released back in 1997 and recently re-released uh, this year 2012. If you enjoy this series, please consider supporting me by subscribing, commenting and rating up these videos. Without any further ado, let's get straight into Final Fantasy VII. And this is the infamous train scene, of course. And as soon as I get control of uh, Cloud, I'm just going to adjust the sound a little bit. So that you can hear the commentary somewhat. And let's go into the config menu. Bring some of this down to about 40. Maybe not that low. Maybe about 60. Soundtrack in this game is pretty much completely epic, so I don't exactly want you to miss that. And let's also bring the battle speed up to fast, since this does use an active time battle system. This game, uh, battle message and field message will raise a little bit as well. And this is probably the only Final Fantasy game, at least one that I can remember, where you can drastically alter the colour of the menu system. Although I'm happy to leave it at the standard blue. And you do have to hold a run button down in order to move at an appropriate speed in this game. Constantly as well. So these are all the things that I think Square kind of learned by, by the uh, later Final Fantasy games. But that still doesn't take away from the fact that Final Fantasy 7 is an absolute classic. And that's pretty much why I've decided now uh, on the re-release of this game to uh, start doing a let's play for it despite the fact that it is all 15 years old uh, the PC version was originally released I think back in 1998 which was a year after the PlayStation version uh, so I did play the original PC version in fact I still have it on my shelf somewhere it doesn't work very well with Windows 7 unless you download a load of third-party patches. Uh, but hopefully this re-release uh, from Square should be fully compatible with the latest version of Windows. I'm just going to keep all the characters with their standard default names for prosperity's sake. Big Wedge and Jesse, three legendary characters of the Final Fantasy universe. And here comes Barrett, another memorable character, of course. You 
can't really tell from uh, his character model, but he does in fact possess uh, a gun arm, the reasons of which will be made clear in the story later on. And since this is an old game, you will just have to put up with the resolution. I do have it set to 720p, but uh, presumably the game wasn't made with that in mind. So yeah, you do have black bars down the left and the right hand side. There is simply no way around that. I'll turn this up a little bit because I can't actually hear any of the sound effects. So yeah, I might have to adjust those a few times uh, until we get it to a level that we're happy with. I'm not using any graphical mods uh, for this playthrough. The mod, uh, sorry, the graphics, the models themselves do look a little bit high res. I think they might have been updated for this 2012 re-release. At least the player models. I mean, Cloud looks a little bit sharp, a little bit crisper. Obviously, nothing by today's standards, but still. And you do start at level six. I haven't done any leveling or anything before starting this Let's Play. As you've just seen, we had the introduction and we are thrown straight into the thick of it. So there's no voice acting in Final Fantasy VII. Uh, we didn't actually get voice acting until I think Final Fantasy X was the first, the first game that had that in. But to be honest, it was not something you really needed back in the day. Apart from the fact that there probably wasn't very good compression techniques, and game Final Fantasy VII was released on four discs anyway, four CDs. So to have everything voice acted, it just wouldn't really have been practical at all, I don't think. And then obviously with the PlayStation 2 and Final Fantasy X, you were... Uh, started getting your games on DVD rather than on CD. So for those of you, and I can't believe it's going to be many of you who have never played this game before, the basic consent, uh, concept, at least at the very start, is that you, the player Cloud, which is this guy here with the funny yellow hair, uh, are basically working for a mercenary group called Avalanche, who want to destroy the evil Shinra Corporation. If that makes you sound like a terrorist group, that's pretty much because you are a terrorist group. Yeah, this was before 9-11 and all that. So basically we've come here to blow up this reactor and probably kill a lot of people in the process, but hey, So the active time battle system is what you can see here. You have to wait for your turn. Uh, there's a progress bar that fills up before you can attack. As you can see, balance is filling up there. That's why I sped it up in the menu. You don't want to be waiting for it for too long. It can get a bit tedious. The famous Final Fantasy fanfare for completing a battle. We've all come to know and love it, I'm sure. But now we just follow Jesse into the reactor. But yeah, uh, Final Fantasy VII had random battles pretty much as random as random could be. You do not get enemies uh, in the field. At least in most cases you do not get enemies in the field. There are a few exceptions, but yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much random is random. We don't have access to the materia system yet for those wondering. We do get that a little bit later. We can collect some materia, which is basically for those who are wondering what materia is. It's our magic spells that we can use. We can collect it, we just can't use it yet. Okay, Jessie's just told us that, she doesn't need to tell us again. Right now we are heading straight into the heart of the reactor. As far as I can tell, apart from the fact that there has been some minor alterations to the graphics in this game, uh, the only other differences that you need to be aware of for the 2012 re-release is that achievements have been added. 
so you can, I don't know, impress all your friends by collecting loads of achievements. Not that they probably haven't already done them themselves back in the day when Final Fantasy VII first came out or something. But, uh, the other thing as well is a character booster, which, in all fairness, I don't think I'll be using. From what I've heard, it basically bumps your hit points and magic points up to their maximum of 9,999. And, actually that's all it does. It doesn't increase any of your other attributes or anything. It, to me, just seems rather pointless. I don't know why they've even done that. Why it's even an option, I do not know. Back in the old school Final Fantasy games, and I do consider Final Fantasy VII an old school game now. Uh, there wasn't really any, just, any case where you healed in between battles, like you do in, say, Final Fantasy XIII. You pretty much have to heal yourself up. And save points don't heal you either, so... So that's our first save file. Hold that run button down. And this is where we're going to be planting our bombs, and there, as I mentioned, is our first material, the restore material. That will allow us to cure uh, our allies. Yeah, so Barrett's leaving it up to us to do the bomb. Lovely. Uh, in the original English version of this game, there was a lot of translation problems uh, as it came over from the Japanese. But I believe they were fixed when the PC version was originally released back in 1998. So hopefully that will still be the case now. There were some terrible spelling mistakes in the dialogue before. So the infamous Guard Scorpion, the first boss of the game. And he's not a particular challenge to be honest with you. I've entered the encounter with very little health. I haven't actually levelled up much and if I remember correctly when I used to play this game I did spend a bit of time in the reactor uh, levelling up and whatnot before fighting this boss. So I haven't done that today. It does help to do grinding and stuff in this game and to be honest I will do that, but I'll probably do it off camera, so to speak, uh, not in the video, so you haven't got to watch grinding and stuff. It's not particularly fun to do, it's certainly not particularly fun to watch. And the Guard Scorpion, I think, has about 800 health, maybe a little bit more. It does seem to build the character's limit breaks up nice and quickly, though. And this could be bad. Now that he's raised his tail, you do not want to attack him. So I'd already chosen Cloud to do the bolt attack, which means he's now going to counter attack with his laser. And that does a nice bit of hurt. Hence why I was ready to cast a potion on Barrett. And I might throw a potion on Cloud as well, just to be on the safe side. And now his tail's dropping down, so we can crack back on with our usual attacks. A couple of limit breaks should do nicely. And we get an achievement for using the Braver, Cloud's first limit break. Hopefully these might just finish him off now. Yes, there we go. 35 damage points from Barrett did the job. And Barrett levels up and gets the assault gun, which I must remember to equip. Okay, so we now have 10 minutes to escape, which is a pretty lenient uh, deadline to reach, to be honest with you. It's nothing you need to really concern yourself with. 
There are still enemy encounters, so just, oh, just bear that in mind. You don't want to be going back there. Oh, uh, I suppose we should save the game as well, shouldn't we? Uh, there is a way to turn your characters around when you have a back attack, but I can't seem to find the controls on the Xbox 360 control pad in order to figure out how to do it. It's basically the same controls as if you were going to run from the battle. But nope, I don't know what it is. And there we go, Cloud has a level, we've won another potion as well. Let's save our game. And now it's just a case of making our way back out the reactor, exactly the same way uh, of which we came in. But it's very important you speak to Jessie since the silly cow has got herself stuck and you can't get out without her. That's it, you just go buggering off now, don't wait for me. So we get a very scary alarm sound warning us that yeah, you need to hurry. And as you can see, the timer does continue to count down when you are in battle. There's no escape from it. Hopefully we should get some decent uh, experience from this fight, so let's have us five enemies. I am just trying to remain a little bit conscious of our health, since Barrett is dropping quite low. But I don't think there's anything for us to, concern our, uh, for us to have to concern ourselves with at the moment. and another potion as well. I mean, maybe we could do a little bit of fighting while we're here. In fact, I think I will. What I'm going to do is stop recording, do a little bit of grinding, and be back with you in just a moment. Okay, so I've left myself just under three minutes to go. Hopefully that'll be enough time to get out. And Barrett has leveled up, and Cloud is very close to leveling. Although I would honestly recommend that if you want to do a bit of grinding here, then you do it before you do the boss, so you're not limited by this timer. Get to Jesse. And did we get the Phoenix down from in here? Yeah, we did. Oh well, we should level up Cloud as well now. Quite easily. Although the battle for these things can be quite slow because they don't rush themselves to attack unfortunately as you can see. So just bear that in mind if you are running low on your time. To be fair though, I've got both my characters levelled up a little bit more and we still have plenty of time to go. There we go, there's Cloud level 9. Speak to Biggs here. And that's it. We are through and done. That is the end of the first mission. So basically the general idea is that the Mako reactors, like the one we've just blown up, are sucking the life force out of the planet and turning it into energy uh, for people to use. And Avalanche, this mercenary group, uh, don't really like the idea of that, so they're trying to put an end to it. I mean Cloud, he doesn't really have any allegiances to anybody, he's just just somebody who's interested in the money and 
he's got his own reasons, should we say. Let's leave it at that for now. But he claims not to care. At least he says he doesn't care. So we've completely recovered now. We're on full health. And wow, that fire was annoying. Now this is the flower girl, or Aries as she's better known, but you can act these choices that you make uh, actually do reflect on something that happens later on, which I won't go into details, so I'm sure many of you know what it is, but for those who don't, uh, I'll be careful what I say. So we'll buy a flower. I cannot not be nice to Aries to be honest with you. I just have to be nice. Grab this item, I can't remember what it is, a potion. The soundtrack to this game is absolutely wonderful, it really is awesome. You don't have to fight the first few groups, but you do have to fight uh, some of the groups later, in just a moment. If you do fight those groups that I've just not fought, then more spawn in their place afterwards, so you still end up surrounded. I beg your pardon, you don't have to fight. I thought you had to fight something. Yeah, clouds on the roof of the train. Hmm. Some of the uh, scenes in this game are extremely cheesy. But back in the 90s, that really didn't matter, so... Oh, I wonder who that could be. Oh, look. Yeah, like I said, some of the scenes are a little cheesy. Also, in the original PlayStation version uh, of the game, the characters did swear. And when the PC version was ported over, they did blank the swearing out with characters. Thanks Jesse, just what I needed. So now we're on the famous train of Midgar, which pretty much goes all the way around the sectors. You don't get to choose where to go on it though, it's only used in fixed parts of the story. One of the annoying things, oh we speak to this guy, I'm sure something happens. No. I seem to remember getting something off him. Maybe it's this one here. Oh no, I'm just uh, losing the plot, I think. Just got scolded by the guard for trying to get into the uh, next section. And you do have to be careful on these trains because there's some weird security system set up. 
when I talk to uh, Jesse. What uh, Wedge saying? Don't you think I've got a bright future ahead of me? What do you have in mind? <laughs> yeah, Ailey's harsh. I shouldn't have said that, should I? Basically, this is just telling us that Midgar is quite an industrial city. Uh, it's got its own slums, that sort of thing, and most of the residential area is built under a giant plate. And as I mentioned, there is a security device on the train, which does come into play a little bit later. As you probably would have guessed, Yeah, Barrett's a bit of a legend, to be honest. He's a big guy, but he doesn't half care about the... Uh, well, I'd say the environment, but it's the planet, isn't it? He's a bit of a preacher, is Barrett. Nice little CGI scene of the train. I remember back on the original uh, PC version that I had, still have. Uh, I could tell when a bit of CGI was coming up because the game would lag for about 10 seconds before each animation started. Why we have to jump off the train rather than step off, I really don't know. Let's see what Baba has to say for himself. The mission was a success, but don't get lazy. Now the hard part's still to come. I'm sure it is. And if you want to, you can go to the right here and do a little bit of grinding, I think, unless I'm getting confused. Uh, I can't be bothered to check. It's possible that I'm right, but it's also possible that I'm wrong. Hmm, this is a weird thing that happens here, if I remember. Yeah, there's a lot of weird conversations that go on around here. In Final Fantasy VII. That's just the way of the game. And there's two guards down here. As far as I can tell, and I've played this game quite a few times, there is absolutely no way to get past them. I don't know if there's... Well, I just don't think there's anything beyond that area. There's just two guards that seem to want to act tough, but apart from that, serve absolutely no purpose whatsoever. But there's a save point here. That there behind the fence is one of the giant pillars that hold the plate up above the sky. And we're going to get a look at it anyway. Final Fantasy VII was pretty much a break from the previous Final Fantasy games, which were all very fantasy in style. And this is much more modern and industrial, really. You still get dragons and whatnot, but it's a completely different style and concept. 
Anyway, we'll save our game and I think we'll call it quits for the first episode. We've completed the first mission, got a couple of extra levels and we are ready to continue in the Sector 7 slums. So for now, I've been Fuzzfinger. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoy this new Let's Play and I certainly got to enjoy playing it because I love this game. Thank you very much. I've been Fuzzfinger. I'll see you next time.